we found it our responsibility to support and protect conservation in our commitment to the planet, to the environment, which in our small way, we have been very conscious of and contributed what we can. In 2007, Dilmar founder Meryl J. Fernando, in partnership with IUCN, established Dilmar Conservation, an organization committed to the principles of sustainability and environmental protection. Dilma Conservation is here to conserve our nature, natural resources, and our cultural diversity. Beginning with a primary focus in wildlife protection in the southern districts of Sri Lanka, Dilma Conservation has now grown to include world-leading and humanitarian-based conservation programs that span the country. The Elephant Transit Home in Udawalawe National Park offers refuge to a growing population of displaced baby elephants. We have roughly 6,000 elephants in Sri Lanka, but uh, their habitats are shrinking rapidly. So there's an ongoing conflict between human and elephants. So it's called human-elephant conflict. This really serious problem now elephants are facing because they are dying each, every day. We have received around more than 200 baby elephants. We received the elephants from all over the country. Every three hours, we feed them. They come to the feeding place and have meal. This program is very unique because they keep the animals for five years and they release to the wild. Dilma Conservation has given them facilities for them to do this task. The day when they are going back to the wild is the most happiest day for the animals. Same time, it's the most happiest day for us. The Information Centre, sponsored by Dilmar Conservation, provides tourists and locals with clear and vital knowledge on the importance of elephant protection. Before they establish that place, mostly people come to this place, just see the animals are feeding and they go back. But with the Information Centre, now we are, have a lot of potential to educate the people. So learning and making awareness to the public is the major important things for conservation. Nearby, in the village of Mankata, Dilma Conservation is using tourism and commerce as tools to educate locals on the importance of elephant and environmental protection. We started this as a pilot project to develop Sri Lankan handcrafted pottery industry and to build very special kind of relationship between National Park and the surrounding people. As well as promoting the National Park and its wildlife, the Mankata Pottery Workshop provides training and support to some of the poorest people in the country, allowing them to earn a living and support their families. We give training, not only pottery making, we train them language skills. We allow them to work with foreigners, we help them to learn management skills also. Now they earn more than $250 per month. They can't even think about that kind of income around here. Dilma Foundation provide all the assistance to this project. It's like a family. The scars of the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami are still visible in Sri Lanka's eastern district of Batikaloa. More than 1,500 acres of green cover close to the coastal area has been washed off. So we started this project calling the greening of Batikaloa district. We have planned to distribute plants to give a income generation for the poor people or the marginalized people. At the same time, we have to give an environmental cover, to give a green cover, to promote the rains and to reduce the sunlight. Delma Conservation is behind the scene of this project. The major role they are playing is the financial help. In addition to restoring Batikaloa's green cover, Delma Conservation hopes to also build a sustainable cashew industry in the area, providing much needed income for the impoverished local community. Cashew is a socio-economic forest crop. We are going to introduce some cashew processing industry also. 
So it will create employment opportunities also for the youths. I can say the Delma Conservation has come forward to distribute 50,000 plants to the people of Batiklu. This bold and ambitious plan represents Dilma Conservation's long-term commitment to economic and environmental development in the East. As well as environmental programs, Dilma Conservation is committed to the cause of cultural diversity in Sri Lanka, supporting marginalised communities across the country. The Wedda are a little-known indigenous people scattered across the east of Sri Lanka. They are people of the forest, a hunter-gatherer community who have for centuries lived in remote jungle areas and followed their own ancient religion. Caught up in the fighting during the Civil War, these communities suffered greatly over 30 years and have grown increasingly isolated. Uh, Dilma Conservation's help has allowed these communities to reconnect with other Wedda tribes in the area leading to the establishment of a regional council in 2011, an acknowledgement of their traditions from the federal government. On the outskirts of Colombo live the Yahikuntika gypsies believed to be descendants of ancient Indian nomads. Known by locals and tourists merely as snake charmers and fortune tellers, the truth about their struggles have remained largely unknown to the greater public. <laughs> maximum that they would live this way is another maybe five, ten years. And if we can't uh, preserve their culture within this period, they are gone forever. To help them with a sustainable future, Dilma Conservation has provided these gypsies with land and assistance to build permanent houses and develop agriculture. With Dilma Conservation's help, these marginalised communities are now seeing a future for themselves in the mainstream. This is the unique cultural identity of Sri Lanka, which we are trying to preserve. We have empowered them, we have given them a voice, we have give, given them some sort of strength to stand on their own. Years of over-farming and unsustainable fertilisation practices have left Sri Lanka's iconic tea fields in dire circumstances. Because of the depletion of soil fertility, the input of chemical fertilizer keeps on increasing. Basically, these soils are just holding the plant up. Dilma Conservation's commitment to sustainability has led to the sponsorship of the Biochar Project, a bold and inventive new fertilization method. The biochar itself is, although new word, is an old technology. We expect to be able to correct the soil pH increase the biomass above ground, allow the plant to withstand extended periods of drought, and also reduce chemical input as a fertilizer by at least 50 to 75 percent. We have uh, seen uh, very visible results because not only the yields, it has improved the quality of the leaf also. This pilot project is just one example of many underway in the estates with the goal of restoring an ecological balance and ensuring the future of the Sri Lankan tea industry for generations to come. With Sri Lanka's civil war now over, Dilma Conservation and its programs have become an integral part of the nation's recovery. Reconciliation Through the Power of Nature is a unique program 
that incorporates environmental research with the important reconciliation efforts already underway between the North and South. We believe that nature is uh, therapeutic and it provides the necessary background for any type of reconciliation. Professor Sanath Kotagama, Sri Lanka's leading environmentalist, has, with Dilmar Conservation, developed an inventive school program making large inroads in the reconciliation effort at grassroots level. We have brought students from Jaffna down south to take to the World Heritage Site, Sasingharaja Forest. Our program is to try and link the south and the north through nature. We have school nature clubs which we have set up. They do bird watching, they observe other nature activities, document them, they make websites, they make drawings. There are so many activities within the program. In 2012, Dilmar Conservation launched the first ever book on birds, written entirely in Tamil. They wrote the book specifically for this program. So basically we hope a publication of this nature would bridge the gap much faster than anything else. Once the site of world-leading environmental research, the Tondamanaru field station in Jaffna was lost during the war. Now, with the support of Dilmar Conservation, along with several other government agencies, plans are in place to rebuild the field station, promoting the free exchange of crucial research data between Jaffna and Colombo. We hope uh, and we believe that we will be able to revive the programs that were there in the past, where many students from the south came to Tondamanaru and learned about the lagoon systems, the sea systems. Dilma Conservation's commitment is to try and revive back something that was a link in the past. In the east, the former LTTE stronghold of Topigala is the site of a new forestry program to encourage revegetation in the area, as well as a focus on biodiversity here. Dilmar Conservation hopes to build a war monument to honour the fallen victims of the conflict. As a country, it's time that we put behind all our past to preserve and conserve our nature. Though for many, the road to reconciliation will be a long one, Dilmar Conservation remains committed to the cause. With even more programs in development for the future, now is only the beginning for Dilmar Conservation, leading the way with its unwavering commitment to a peaceful and sustainable world. We have only one planet. It is important that we do not only take out what we can, but we must put back more than what we take.